Celebrating 15 years of Young Turks. Hello and welcome. You are watching Young Turks, India's longest running show on entrepreneurship. This is Young Turks Travel Diary Special and you are watching Chapter Israel 2016. If Jugaad, which literally means finding cost-effective alternatives, is in our DNA and is an Indian way of innovation, imagining and creating something from scratch is the Israeli way. On Young Turks, we find out what makes them the way they are and take some chutzpah lessons from Israeli startups. Entrepreneurs, behold! Young Turks took off on a startup hunt in the city of Tel Aviv. Our first stop was Air Robotics and boy oh boy, we sure had some fun. It's a bird. It's a plane. No, this is Air Robotics Industrial Drone and their startup story starts with a juicer at a departmental store. Yes, you heard me right. So I went in to get a juicer and then I saw this little toy and I picked it up. I forgot the juicer. And then I uh, just started playing with it all the time and I was fascinated with the technology and very quickly had a lot of ideas of what could be done with this platform and I said, well, I missed out on the internet, I missed out on smartphone, I'm not missing out on this. So while everyone was looking at the consumer market, you looked at the industrial enterprise space. Is that where you think the future lies? Yeah, I think that uh, you know the drone industry grew into the consumer space, uh, very right so, because there is a lot of people who are interested in drones. But I think the bigger challenge is being able to actually max out the potential for drones. So for us, that was the industrial enterprise. Being able to use this thing not as a toy or as a semi-professional kind of equipment for aerial photography, but as an actual tool that can generate ROI. So apart from landing the drone safely back into the box, what is your biggest challenge as of today? Well, I think our biggest challenge right now is to getting people to believe what we're doing is real. Uh, you know, it's not just software, it's not just hardware, it's very complicated, it's very cutting edge. And to be able to explain to clients who can't come here what we really have here is very challenging. So despite being an Israeli startup and having such a thriving ecosystem, you had to reach out to the Valley yeah. for investment. Would you say that uh, the Israeli ecosystem was supportive of your idea or believed in what you were doing or do you plan on packing up your bag and moving to the Valley sometime in the future? At the beginning when there was nothing, it was relatively hard to sell to people in Israel and we thought that Silicon Valley has more of a capability to believe in something that's so far off and you know trust us that we can execute so that's why we chose to uh, raise our funds there but in terms of development I think for what we're doing Israel is probably one of the best places in the world to do it. And that is a real sentiment amongst entrepreneurs in the startup nation. Time to move on from one element to the other from air to water. My name is Ari Kochavi. I'm uh, the founder and co-CEO of Waterdrain um, from Israel. Waterdrain produced water out of air. When I was young, I was uh, a commander in the Israeli Special Forces. Uh, and the uh, need for water is something that I know, you know from my feet. It's very heavy to carry. You need trucks, you need uh, all the logistics. And I thought, even when I, when I was young, that it should be a better way to do that. We develop uh, and sell uh, products for military. And what we did in the last uh, years is to take the technology that we have, to upgrade it, and to adjust it uh, to civilian application. So a cost of a liter of water we produce from the air is around 1.8 rupee per liter. So we can produce from the air water that is much cheaper than the water you buy in cans and for sure if you buy in bottles. Commercially, we are in discussion with government. Then there is the B2B le level. We are in advanced discussion with big groups like Unilever, like uh, Evoca Forbes, like Adani Group, like uh, Tata Group. Uh, so we purify the air and then we extract the water and clean the water afterward. So the water is perfect, but also the air is perfect. Both the same. Yes. 
so creating water out of thin air i don't know about you but i was very very impressed but we can't give sheer lineage the credit for what israel is today what makes this country great is the fact that it functions like a startup in itself and the team includes the people of course a rock steady government support and a very mature investment circle so i caught up with one of israel's leading vc firms called jerusalem venture partners they work very closely with the israel government and now interestingly they also have an india connect Founded in 1993, Jerusalem Venture Partners or JVP has raised over 1 billion dollars to date and seen 28 exits. I caught up with Fiona Darmon, COO and partner of JVP to deep dive into the Israeli investor circle. Give us, uh, you know, an update on what are the kind of companies that JVP usually invests in. Right, so thank you very much for this opportunity. So, uh, JVP is a fund we've been around for the last 23 years, but I think one of the things that we enjoy is by taking advantage of our incubators, we start and initiate companies in the areas of cybersecurity, mm. big data storage, um, fintech, and now in collaboration with Motorola and Reliance of yeah. India yeah. we are going to be doing a lot of storage enterprise software computer vision uh, startups in our incubator here in Jerusalem okay uh, you know when we were chatting up offline one thing that uh, you kept emphasizing is on the fact that how the government and a private corporate venture partner uh, like JVP works in complete sync and that's what the israeli startup ecosystem is all about exactly so well over the last 20 such years the government has been tremendously innovative in finding ways to create a public private partnership which is not fully dependent on the government the government is more of a facilitator a driver rather than you know Uh, being involved in the decision making it's more about pushing the machine and making sure it's constantly moving the government is giving half a million dollars to every company that we start in a government sponsored incubator okay. on one interesting condition that i only put up a hundred thousand so they are taking the risk they are incentivizing us to mm -hmm. start the companies then if the company is successful they're stepping back with, because they only gave us a loan mm -hmm. and we're running the business in india we just launched uh the startup policy this year and we're still struggling with certain things like you know defining innovative startups there is there, there are clauses which says that we would only invest in innovative startups how do you define innovative who well, defines it well, that's a, that's okay so, but, but did you have similar uh yes so it's last year the incubator program when it first started was only the the, the government it was the government own money looking for its own deals creating its own companies and i no think the government no private, no private. and like, then the okay. government i think realized that for the companies to succeed and to increase the probability for the company to succeed they need the private sector mm -hmm. so we are chosen by the government to operate incubators for eight years right. we select the companies over the thousand companies we see every year we pick we choose we narrow then we come to the government and we say this is disruptive so what can investors uh, uh back home or back in india learn from investors in israel what i th i on? think that the trick is the partnership mm -hmm. where the government is a facilitator the academia is a fa facilitator and that the, the per third part of the puzzle really be the commercial operator in israel statistics show that for every dollar spent in the incubator program mm -hmm. there's over six dollars of private funding and in jvp by the way it's actually eleven dollars on average okay. so that is a model of success is how much your money is being put to draw in foreign funding and on top of that the success ratio of exits this was my second visit to israel and all i can say is that i am amazed all over again with that it's time for me to pack my bag and head home i am megha vishwanath along with my camera person narendra khandpur and this is the end of chapter israel 2016 of young jerks travel diaries product so